So the question is, um, is the is what is theistic evolution, and is it sixty four? It's sixty four. Is it six days, literal twenty four hours? Okay, six literal twenty four hour days. Okay, so that's the question. Um, now, first of all, why does this question come up? As I briefly mentioned today at worship service also today, there are Christians that believe in theistic evolution. Now, what's the meaning? These three words, there is creation, all right? There's evolution, okay? And then there is theistic evolution. Okay, uh, Ray, what is theistic evolution? It means that God created the world through evolution. God created the world through, I won't say, cre God created the world through evolution. Alright? What's the meaning of theistic? Now, whenever you see this word, theos, theos, theos is God. Right, so theistic, God creation, God's evolution. So now, there are Christians who believe that God did not create through ex nihilo. Okay, and it is not, it is not, oh sorry, I should not say and this 24 hour literal day there are two issues that are that are at, at stake here one is did god create through ex nihilo shenry what's ex nihilo okay out ex of nothing okay out of nothing so there are those who believe God did not create out of nothing means there are pre-existing materials and then through these pre-existing materials things evolved right so evolution is basically this things existed and then they evolved from there all right but in the Bible we see God creation was ex nihilo how do we know so we need to turn to Genesis chapter 1 Genesis chapter 1 Okay, Genesis chapter 1. Let's read verse 1 and 2 together. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Okay, so now, this is God telling us creation. Um, who was there at creation? Were you there? No. Were you born yet? No. Creation was a few thousand years ago. How old are you? Six. Right. So definitely you did not exist then. Right. So how do we know how did God create the world? You want to know? How to know? The only way to know is what God tells us from the Bible. Right. So God is the creator. God made use of Moses to write how he created the world. Okay, understand that? Now, and God's revelation is in the beginning. So, before time began, there was no time. Then at, at one point, God said, beginning means time came into play. He created, verse 1, created, not evolved, He created. Verse 2, and the earth was without form. So, in other words, how does God describe His creation? Okay, this is time, huh? time, right, time, you know graph, time, okay, before time, there was no time, so it's like that, so this is when time began, time began, okay, so before that, there was no such thing as time, just, just 
another, what you call that, another realm altogether. And then God say, I intend to create. Then He said, in the beginning. So at this point, God created. What happened immediately? Verse 2 says what? Can someone read for me? Verse 2. It begins with? And. Very good. And. And the earth was without form. So at this point, when God created the world, the world was without form. Means no shape, things are not in place yet. Understand? Without form. Okay? But people who believe... Now, this is scriptures in Hebrew original language. The word is N. But those that believe in theistic evolution, they change this word in verse 2. Instead of God created and the world came into existence but without form, they say they change it to when. When. When the world, God created when the world was without form. In other words, it's trying to say that before God created, something already pre-existed and when God created, God created when the earth was without form. Alright? So that is the idea that they are trying to teach. In other words, God did not create out of nothing, number one. <coughs> now, um, number two is this. So, so in the Bible, it's very clear. Can you be sure? When people say God used evolution, the pre-existing materials. No, the Bible says God simply spoke and then they came into the world, came into, the earth came into existence. It did not wait for a long time, slowly, slowly became something. God spoke and it immediately existed. In fact, can you please look at your Bible? Now, how did God create? Okay, I'll give you some hint. Eh? Verse, so the question is this. Okay, maybe I ask um, Sing Yin to answer. Alright, so you listen. The question is this. How did God create the world? Okay, so that's the question. So now I read to you. Look at verse 3. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Okay, and then we move further down. Verse 9. And God said, Let the waters under earth be gathered together. Okay, and then the earth was gathered together. And then verse 11, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass. So grass came. And then in verse 14, And God said, Let there be lights. And then further down, in verse 24, And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creature. So I ask you this, how did God create everything that came into existence? He spoke, right? Scripture is very clear. And God said, and God said, and God said. God simply spoke things into existence. God did, and when God spoke, the, the Bible records, after every time He spoke, He said, then He describes those things appear. Okay? So how does the Bible, I'm not talking about evolution, how does the Bible tell us, like this morning's message, right? How do we get wisdom to know how God created from the Bible? How did God say He created the world? He spoke and then they came into existence. So is this evolution? No. He spoke and then they appear. Okay, God spoke things into existence. You know what's the meaning? Alright, so we learned some Latin words. Huh? All right, ex nihilo means we read nihilo. We read Genesis one, one and two. Nothing existed. God created. Okay. The next thing is as Sing Yun Sing Yun has helped us say God said so God God spoke things into existence. Now this is called what? Because you always come across these words. You may as well know what. Starts with F. I. Fiat. Alright, fiat. Fiat. Alright, so when you see these words, what you mean? God created out of nothing. He, fiat is his, just by his word. Okay, just by his word. Things came into existence, not evolution, by his word. Okay, number three. Now, this out of nothing, from here to here, God spoke, it came into. Spoke, it came into. 
Now the question is this, which is what you're also asking. You turn to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 again. Now, not verse 1, but can you look at, do you see verse 5? When is the first day? Verse 5, right? Verse 5 have the word first day, correct? Can you find where is the second day? Verse 8, very good. Verse 8, and then the next one, the third day? Say again? 13, okay, third day. Fourth day? 19. Fifth day? Say again? 23. Fifth day? And sixth day we know is when he created man. Okay, so now, the question is this. Day 1, day 2, day 3, day 4, day 5, day 6. Day 7 got rested, right? So in theistic evolution, number 1, they don't, they don't believe that. God created out of nothing, but we just read Genesis 1 and 2. There was nothing, God spoke, they came into existence. Okay? Now, so from here to here, you will notice, you look at your Bible, Genesis 1. Now, when in verse 5, And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening morning, and the evening and morning were the first day. Okay, so now, to the theistic evolutionists, they say, when God said, let there be light, the light did not appear immediately. A lot of things he said, he spoke, then it took a long time. From here to here is a long time. They say it took, it can take millions of years between each stage, between each day. It took millions of years, right? Is that what? You're understanding what people are saying? Right? It took millions of years from here to here to here to here. So he said three and then it took millions of years for the trees to come about. That's why the whole earth is millions or billions of years old. Okay, so that's theistic evolution. They say God created through evolution. Because evolution is billions of years, right? So God created through billions of years. So now the question is this. Here to here to here, each day, is it millions of years or is it one literal 24-hour day. Okay? Um, Sing Yuan, why does the person argue that it is not one 24-hour day? Because of second of Peter or something, is it? No. Correct. All right. Yes, they will quote some verses. They want to know which verse the person uses. Yeah, correct. Okay. So that is the verse that 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 says one day can be a thousand years, right? Okay. So now we explain. All right. So. Does the Bible tell us that sometimes the word day can refer to a long period of time? It does. We just read that. Right? One day can be a thousand years. Now, the word day. Now, does the Bible use the word day to mean, okay, it can be a long period? Does the Bible use the day to mean literal 24 hours day? Does it just use the word day to mean that? Of course, there are many cases. You know, um, this day, the next day, it was literally the next day Jesus woke up. It's not Jesus slept for one, one, one million years, all right? So they can be used for this or this in the scriptures, correct? Now the question is this. In Genesis itself, which is it? Was God referring to long period when he used the word day? Or was he referring to literal 24 hours day, correct? Okay, so... Then we have to look at the language. Okay, we have to look at language because God spoke. Now, the word, the Hebrew word day is called yom. Yom. Okay? Yom. Now, 
Yom can mean a long period, Yom can mean literal 24 hours. In the scriptures, it's like that. So we cannot argue with them. No, Yom only means 24 hours. Then you look at a fool. Okay, because it is not true. The Bible, the language uses both. Hebrew word like that. Um, like for example, the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord, tribulation is how many years? Seven years, right? So it can mean seven years, day of the Lord, seven years. So then for the language in Hebrew language in Genesis chapter 1, there are things in there that will tell us that God was only referring to this. Okay, number one is, so you have to write them, there are three arguments that is very clear that is literal 24 hour day. Number one, from the language itself. Okay, so the scribe is taking that, right? From the language itself, whenever, okay, you type this, eh? whenever the word yom is used in conjunction with a numerical adjective. You typing fast enough? Whenever the word yom is used with a numerical adjective, it is without exception always referring to a literal 24 hour day. What is yom plus um, numerical adjective? What does it mean? What does numerical adjective mean? Numerical adjective means it describes, right? A number describing yom. Okay? So you see in scriptures here. Verse 5 is first. Day. Alright? Then the next one is in verse 8. Second day. Alright? Now, in Genesis, God specifically said numerical adjective with yom. I say again, whenever the numerical adjective is used with yom, in scriptures especially, it has never, there's no exception, it's always re re referring to a literal 24-hour day. Okay? Number one. That's your first argument from scriptures. And you must be clear in your heart. Number two. What do you think? Okay, you look at verse 1 and verse 8 and verse 13. Just, just look at these three verses. You tell me in there, what other things in there that will tell you that it would be referring to literal 24 hours. 1, eh, sorry, 5, 8, and 13. Huh? Evening. evening and morning. Thanks. So, evening and morning. Evening and morning. Evening and morning. You notice that every time the Lord talks about the creation days, without fail, he uses, he adds this evening and morning to it. Okay, you believe me? Okay, so um, scribe help us. Huh? Verse 5, do you see evening and morning? Evening and morning, what the first day? Verse, what's the next one? Verse 8, um, evening and morning, and the evening and morning was second day. Verse 13, and the evening and morning were the third day. What's the next one? 19. Um, and the evening and morning were the fourth day. 23, and the evening and morning were the fifth day. Okay, it does not... God knew, basic, basically, that man will want to say it is evolution. Even in God's language, when he put it down, he made sure. You know the meaning of God's omniscience? means God knows everything. God knows the future. In knowing that, that he's, he will add this phrase as if this is not confirmed enough. He add this to make sure you cannot argue with, with the fact that it is real day, morning, evening. Alright? Now, what is, so that is the second argument. The third. Turn to Exodus chapter. Who, who thinks, who knows the third? What is the third? Ichung cannot mention because he watched the video. What is the third argument? Who wants to try? Yeah. Say again. Evening and morning. That's the second. Ask for the third. Say again. 
God rests on the Sabbath. All right, you turn to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. It has to do with the Sabbath law. The third one is the Sabbath law. All right, so scribe is called Sabbath law. The third argument. Okay, the Sabbath law. Now, what does God say? Now, God, when He institute the Sabbath law, what is the Sabbath law? Seven, the six days we work, seven days we rest, right? That's the Sabbath law. When God instituted this law, He referred it to His creation. Okay, His creation work. Look at verse 8. Verse 8, Exodus 20, verse 8. Shall we read verse 8 to 11 together? Reading, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter nor thy manservant nor thy maidservant nor thy cattle nor thy strangers that is within their gates. Why? Verse 11. For in the six days the Lord made heaven and earth and see and all that in them is and rested the seventh day wherefore the lord blessed the sabbath day and hallowed it the reason god give for telling us to rest on the seventh physical day is because verse 11 he worked six days and then he rested on the seventh numerical adjective plus yom and when the Lord referred to his creation, he referred it to six literal days. Now, if we were to say that this day, this means, applying the same principle, God took 15 billion years to create this earth. Then he rested. Then same for us, no? Who wants to work for 15 billion years before you ever get one day rest? All right? Even I say one day is 100 years. If you have to work if one day is 100 years, sub, uh, six days is how many hundred years? 600 years. We have to work 600 years. Can you even live 600 years? All right. So God would not be giving that. So by his Sabbath law, which in this chapter is giving the Ten Commandments, he referred to the Sabbath law and he referred to his creation. So these are the three biblical arguments that from scripture, we know that it has to be literal days. All right, understand that? Uh, Sing Yuan, Ken? Okay, now, so this is how to answer them. Yes, the Bible uses the word day for long periods as well as short. The question is for this, what it was. And we'll have these three points here to say that it was definitely a literal 24-hour day. All right? Okay? Right, huh? Any other questions that come out of it? Now, why do people want to believe evolution? Because it's so-called scientific. But you know, science do not call evolution a science. Science themselves say it's a theory. All right? It's a theory, that's all. But we, men do not, rather men would put the wisdom of the world higher than God, so they want to merge these two. We cannot merge these two. Now, the glory of God is at stake. God's creation in seven days is to demonstrate His power. All right? There are verses in the Bible, He say that creation demonstrates His power, His glory. Um, God did not evolve. And anyway, like I said this morning in sermon, you turn to Genesis again. Okay, you turn to Genesis. How did God create Adam? Can you find it? So you see in verse Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now this is, the word created is mentioned how many times? Three times. Three times. To make very sure that man knows that he created not through evolution and notice it says god created man in whose image his image not image of a monkey 
That is why Satan has a very good laugh when Christians want to believe in evolution. God created you in the image of a monkey. You came from monkeys. In other words, God is a monkey. Yeah. So God make it very clear. He mentioned three times created man in my own image and he created male and female. Now he did not say that I created Adam and then I let Eve evolve. Eve was also created. Okay? So that is another thing. So when you read scriptures, you cannot but ex you cannot accept theistic evolution. Now, can you please look at chapter 2, Genesis chapter 2? How did Eve, how was Eve created? Who can find it? In verse Sing Yuan. How was Eve? How did God tell us He created Eve? Okay, yep, Genesis chapter 2, verse 21 and 22. Let's read together. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her into, unto the man. Is this clear enough? very clear that God did not evolve any human being. He created, and for Eve's case, he created of the rib. He made, the Lord said he made, and he closed up, and this was the sixth day itself, not made thousands of years or millions of years. Okay, so now when you read scriptures like that, can you, unless you don't want to read scriptures, I don't want to read scriptures, I don't want to read these accounts, I don't want to read about Adam and Eve, then you can just simply say, theistic evolution, theistic evolution. But when you read scriptures, you cannot run away from these facts. How do you explain all this into theistic evolution? You can't. It's a very straightforward account. Why, do, why does Satan want to come up with this concept of evolution? So this is a question for you. Why do you think Satan wants the world to believe in evolution? Try. Why do you think Satan wants to invent a, this concept of evolution? Very good. Number one, okay, because it stops people from believing in God. It stops people from believing in God. How? How? Because, you see, to the Christian, in the first place, Evolution stood by itself. Evolution will say, evolution means that there is no God. Things simply evolved. Things just evolved from a big bang. What has it to do with God? And in fact, since they started this, so now, number one, stop you from believing in God. What about another reason? What happens when people believe in evolution? Think of the creation, think of Garden of Eden. If man evolved, that means, say again, means no sin, right? No fall. Unless it's the monkey falling down from a tree. There's no fall. The account of the Garden of Eden tells us the origin of what? Sin. The origin of sin is God created, man disobeyed, and sin came into this world. The origin of sin is also denied because of evolution. Understand that? And as a result, over time, with Darwin writing this, people began to question whether there is a God. We don't need God. We, there's no God, actually. Or we just realized, all this while we thought God created, there was a superstition. Ha, now we need to go on the side of science. It's superstitious. Science tells us we evolved through a big bang and then people move away from God and from then on all sorts of false isms came about you know communism what does communism believe there's no God understand Marxism all sorts of very wicked beliefs came about all right so now that is why yeah
the modern evolution of this is nothing new, nothing mm. more tragic. Mm. Similar concept has been there for the really people who have taken time. Yep. The world has some time. Mm. This is uh, the world here is a new God. Mm. Another thing is, I think people who believe in theistic uh, they have a diminished view of God. Yes, correct. Think, uh, first of all, they have to start with something. Mm. They start with the life that lives mm. in that matter. Mm. They to start with God. Mm. They create to make the life of another equal to God. Yes. Number one. Number two, I think if you think God has to use theistic evolution, I think if people think evolution is conclusive proven mm. that they try to marriage within uh, the science, the so called science, which is not really right. Correct. And thirdly, I think, which is much more important, people who believe the evolution I think they don't they have a diminished view of God. Mm. God cannot be a thing. Yep. Yep. Yes, you see? So ultimately, the book of Psalms, you often read, the Psalms say, Thy creation praise thy name. But evolution is, no, God did not create, evolve. But God's creation is say, I can create things out of nothing. Ex nihilo, that's why I want you to learn those words. It shows the power and the glory of God. Until today, no one can create things from nothing. Only God. But the moment we say evolution, then the view of God has dropped. God's glory is taken from him. God said, I can speak and things exist and they come into existence within 24 hours. No, no, it takes a long time for these things to happen. Understand that? But let me ask you one question. So yes, you're right. It is the one thing that happens to the Christian who believe in theistic evolution is their, their view, the right view of God is lowered. That's very important. Now, I'll ask you another question. You know, they tell you a tree tongue, all right? A tree trunk, a tree trunk. And then there are the circles, right? They say we have cut down trees and we calculate that, you know what is each ring, right? Each ring means how many years, then the bark peels and then they form another one. So the rings will tell us how old the tree is, correct? Okay, and say so based on this tree that they cut down, they say, oh, this alone will tell you it occurs. This tree took millions of years, millions of years. How do you explain that? You wanna try? You have your friends say, look, science tells us when you cut down this tree from the rings, you just calculate the rings. It took millions of years. So this tree must have stood for millions of years, and the earth must be there for millions of years. Yes, very good, because God created the tree at its full form. Okay? So God is not limited. God must not, okay, tree, oh no, I must wait, I must plant a seed, and the seed must grow, and then God keeps keep waiting, 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 one day, millions of years, oh, finally, tree is there. No, when God says, spoke tree, the tree went, it just grew. Alright? It just formed all this. What about man? When God created man, was did God say I created a baby? Look, baby Adam must grow up. When Adam was grown, he could get married already, full grown man. Right? God can create man fully grown. So God, even this means that God, God simply spoke and then it can be in this form. Alright? What about this other one? Oh, sorry, I've been blocking you, Jason. Are you alright? Okay. Now, the next thing is this. Earth is here. Alright, Earth is here. Now, this is a star. Okay, this is a star. And the star is very far away. And then this is someone's eye, Ray's eye. Ray's eye on Earth. Alright, now for... So science tell you, look, Ray E can see this star, means the light took some time to reach Ray's eyes. Okay? And then they say, now light travels at what speed? Eh? Don't know. Light travels at a certain, certain speed, right? They say, in order for light to reach here, to reach Ray E's eyes, the fact that Ray E can see it, means it took some time for this star, this star's light, to reach Ray E's eyes. So, and then they calculate, oh, this is like billions of light years away. This far is so far away, for the light of the star to reach Earth, it will take billions of years before it can reach the earth for a human being to see it. Okay? 
So he said, based on this scientific calculation, the universe existed for billions of years. It took billions of years to evolve. Sing Yuan. Hey, Sing Yun, how would you answer that? Hmm? Say again. Maturity. How do you know maturity? Do you turn to Genesis chapter 1? Okay. Verse 3, right? And God said, Let there be light. And it took a few billion years for the light to reach everywhere in the universe. No. They say, Let there be light. And there was light. So, how to draw universe? I don't know. All right, Earth, just Earth. Let there be light and then let there be light, just light everywhere. Fill the whole universe immediately. Let there be light. The Bible didn't say let there be light and it took millions, billions of years before the light reached Mars. No. Light existed straight away. Okay? When did God create the stars? Which day? Hmm? Heavens and earth. Yeah, but which day did God create the stars? Where? The fourth day, let's read. Proof. Verse, verse 16, right? Verse 16, And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, which is what? The sun. And the lesser light to rule the night, which is the moon. And he made the stars also. Which day was this? Hmm? Fourth day. Huh? Did God need to create the stars and wait for stars' light to reach the earth? The stars could be seen because God already made light to exist in every corner of this universe. He did not need to wait for the stars' light to arrive. Okay? Then you say, then your, then your friend tells you, no, but scientifically it takes that long. So what can you say? So ultimately, creation is about what? Start with the word F. Hmm? Say again. You say something. It's about faith in God's word. God said there was light. Let there be light. Light was there. God said 24 hour day is 24 hour day. But if your, person, if your friend doesn't have faith, he doesn't believe, you argue to the cow come home. There's no use. You waste your saliva. Right? What is important is the person yourself, you read God's word, you believe, and then you say, God, I glorify you as God, the creator. That's all you can do. Right? So, um, if a person wants to choose that way, you can only explain and try to help the person understand. If the person loves the Lord and says, wow, this is God's word, and God's glory is there, he will believe, or she will believe. Alright? Okay? So, so, all these arguments, this is how you answer. Now your friend said, your God said that there be light and there was light, I don't believe. Then what else can you prove? There's nothing else you can prove already. But there is your faith, your belief. Because you can ask him, were you there when it happened? Hmm? No, I was not there too. Why do you believe in God's word? Why do you believe what God told you? Because I have faith in this God. That's it. Alright? Okay, that, that's all we can say. Alright, so, test time, quiz time. What are the three? No, how many? Okay, three. What are the three? <laughs> what are the three biblical bases upon which we believe it is a literal twenty-four hour day? You. Yes. <laughs> Yom. <coughs> Say again. Okay, evening and morning, alright So you pick the easy one already <laughs> Evening and morning Because God keeps saying evening and morning Every single time God mentioned day He said evening and morning It's like, hello, I cannot tell you any more clearly I tell you say evening and morning What else do you want to argue with me? Okay, second one Say again Day and first Very good So Day Plus Numerical Numerical Adjective. What are they? First, second, third, and so on. Right? Okay, this is always, without fail, without exception in the language, it refers to literal 24-hour day. Number three. 
Very easy. That's on Sabbath law. Taken from Exodus chapter 20. Alright? This three must be clear in your heart. Now the thing is this. You are still going to meet friends that are going to challenge you. Have I made up anything that I said Joseph said this? I showed you from scriptures. This is from scripture. This is from scripture. You read yourself. This is from scripture. You read yourself. Alright? It must be your conviction. Not church, not friends. It must be your own. You've seen it yourself from God's word, I believe. Every time they mention, well, you want to explain, you explain. You don't want to argue anymore, don't argue anymore. But in your heart, you believe. Okay? That's all I can tell you. Alright? So, I didn't make this up. You read it in scriptures yourself. Alright, so that is the... Okay, so have I answered um, the question that you had, Sing Yuan? Okay, so the person is correct. They can be long, can be short. So the question is, is it long or short in this case? Then we read from scriptures. The three things is very clear. Okay, what do we have here? Top five reasons why church dropouts, uh, what church dropouts say, why they stop attending church. Now, please remember 66% of, well, I take the American view, um, they're the most readily available results. They stop attending church at least a year after turning 18. So from